Los Angeles New Times, Washington Post When Gwyneth Paltrow was 22 years old, she got a role that would take her from actress to star film producer Harvey Weinstein hired her for the lead in the 1996 Jane Austen adaptation Emma. Before shooting began, he summoned her to his suite at the Peninsula Beverly Hills Hotel for a work meeting that began uneventfully. It ended with him placing his hands on her and suggesting they head to the bedroom for massages, she said. I was a kid, I was signed up, I was petrified, she said in an interview, publicly disclosing that she was sexually harassed by the man who ignited her career and later helped her win an Academy Award. She refused his advances, she said, and confided in Brad Pitt, her boyfriend at the time. Pitt confronted Weinstein, and soon after, the producer warned her not to tell anyone else about his comian. I thought he was going to fire me, she said. Rosanna Arquette, a star of Pulp Fiction 1994, has a similar account of Weinstein's behavior, as does Judith Godresh, a leading French actress. So does Angelina Jolie, who said that during the release of Playing by Heart in the late 1990s, he made unwanted advances on her in a hotel room, which she rejected. I had a bad experience with Harvey Weinstein in my youth, and as a result, chose never to work with him again and warn others when they did, she said in an email. This behavior towards women in any field, any country is unacceptable. A New York Times investigation last week chronicled a hidden history of sexual harassment allegations against Weinstein and settlements he paid, often involving former employees, over three decades up to 2015. By Sunday evening, his entertainment company fired him. On Tuesday, The New Yorker published a report that included multiple allegations of sexual assault, including forced oral and vaginal sex. The New Yorker story was written by Ronan Farrow, the son of actress Mia Farrow and Woody Allen, who directed the Weinstein-produced Mighty Aphrodite 1995. Three women too on the record told The New Yorker that Weinstein raped them. One of the women, Italian actress-director Asia Argento, said that after she reluctantly agreed to give Weinstein a massage in a hotel room in 1997, he pulled up her skirt, forced her legs apart and performed oral sex on her. She said she repeatedly told him to stop. Weinstein terrified me, and he was so big, she said. It would not stop. It was a nightmare. The New Yorker also published audio, obtained during a 2015 New York Police Department sting, in which Weinstein admits to model Amber Badalona Gutierrez that he groped her as he tried to persuade her to join him in his hotel room. Oh, please, I'm sorry, just come on in, he tells her. Several days ago, additional actresses began sharing with the Times on the record stories of casting couch abuses. Their accounts hint at the sweep of Weinstein's alleged harassment, targeting women on the way to stardom, those who had barely acted and others in between. Fantasies that the public eagerly watched on screen, the women recounted, sometimes mask the dark experiences of those performing in them. The encounters they recalled followed a similar narrative, first, they said, Weinstein lured them to a private place to discuss films, scripts or even Oscar campaigns. Then, the women contend, he variously tried to initiate massages, touched them inappropriately, took off his clothes or offered them explicit work for sex deals. In a statement on Tuesday, his spokeswoman, Sally Hoffmeister, said any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied by Mr. Weinstein. Mr. Weinstein has further confirmed that there were never any acts of retaliation against any women for refusing his advances. He will not be available for further comments, as he is taking the time to focus on his family, on getting counseling and rebuilding his life. Even in an industry in which sexual harassment has long persisted, Weinstein stands out, according to the actresses and current and former employees of the film companies he ran, Miramax and The Weinstein Co. He had an elaborate system, reliant on the cooperation of others' assistants often booked the meetings, arranged the hotel rooms and sometimes even delivered the talent, then disappeared, the actresses and employees recounted. They described how some of Weinstein's executives and assistants then found them agents and jobs or hushed actresses who were upset. His alleged behavior became something of a Hollywood open secret when comedian Seth MacFarlane announced Oscar nominees in 2013. He joked, Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. The audience laughed. According to a 2015 memo by a former Weinstein co-executive that The Times previously disclosed, the misconduct continued. More established actresses were fearful of speaking out because they had work less established ones were scared because they did not. This is Harvey Weinstein, Catherine Kendall, who appeared in the 1996 films Wingers and Television Roles, remembers telling herself after an encounter in which she said Weinstein undressed and chased her around a living room.
Telling others meant I'll never work again and no one is going to care or believe me, she reasoned at the time, she said in a recent interview. Paltrow, 45, is now an entrepreneur, no longer dependent on securing her next acting role. But she emphasized how much more vulnerable she felt at 22, when Weinstein had just signed her up for a star-making part. On a trip to Los Angeles, she received a schedule from her agents for the hotel meeting with Weinstein. Film producer Harvey Weinstein had summoned Gwyneth Paltrow, who was then 22 years old, to his suite at the Peninsula Beverly Hills Hotel for a work meeting that began uneventfully, but ended with him placing his hands on her and suggesting they head to the bedroom for massages. Photo AFP There was no reason to suspect anything untoward, because it's on the facts, it's from CA, she said, referring to Creative Artists Agency, which represented her. When Weinstein tried to massage her and invited her into the bedroom, she immediately left, she said, and she remembers feeling stunned as she drove away. I thought you were my uncle Harvey, she recalled thinking, explaining that she had seen him as a mentor. After she told Pitt about the episode, he approached Weinstein at a theater premiere and told him never to touch Paltrow again. Pitt confirmed the account to the Times through a representative. Soon after, Weinstein called Paltrow and berated her for discussing the episode, she said. She said she also told a few friends, family members and her agent. He screamed at me for a long time, she said, once again fearing she could lose the role in Emma. It was brutal, but she stood her ground, she said, and insisted that he put the relationship back on professional footing. Even as Paltrow became known as the First Lady of Miramax and won an Oscar for Shakespeare in Love in 1999, very few people knew about Weinstein's advances. I was expected to keep the secret, she said. Like several of the other women interviewed for this article, she felt she had to suppress the experience. She praised Weinstein publicly, posed for pictures with him and played the glowing star to his powerful producer. Yet their work relationship grew rockier over the years, she said, and she distanced herself. He was alternately generous and supportive and championing, and punitive and bullying, she said. Now, with the process of tallying the size and scope of Weinstein's abuse allegations underway, Paltrow and others said they wanted to support women who had already come forward and help those in similar situations feel less alone. We're at a point in time when women need to send a clear message that this is over, Paltrow said. This way of treating women ends now. In the early 1990s, Weinstein asked Arquette to stop by the Beverly Hills Hotel to pick up a script for a role. Born into a family of actors, Arquette had already starred in a hit film, Desperately Seeking Susan 1985, and New York Stories 1989, and would go on to perform in films including Crash 2004 and television shows ranging from Ray Donovan to Girls. Her account also appeared in The New Yorker. At the reception desk, she was told to head upstairs, which she found odd. Weinstein asked actress Rosanna Arquette to stop by the Beverly Hills Hotel to pick up a script for a role. At the reception desk, she was told to head upstairs, which she found odd. Photo AFP Weinstein was in a white bathrobe, complaining of neck pain and asking for a massage, according to Arquette and Maria Smith, a friend she told soon afterwards. Arquette said she tried to recommend a professional masseuse, but Weinstein grabbed her hand and pulled it toward his crotch. She immediately drew away, she said. He boasted about the famous actresses he had supposedly slept with a common element of his comian, according to several other women who had encounters with Weinstein. Rosanna, you're making a big mistake, he responded, she said. She refused. I'm not that girl, she recalled telling him on the way out. I will never be that girl. The part went to someone else, and Weinstein's representative pointed out that he did not produce the movie. Later, Arquette was in the Miramax film Pulp Fiction but said she avoided Weinstein. When Weinstein invited Godrush to breakfast at the Cannes Film Festival in 1996, she had no idea who he was. At 24, she was already a star in France, and a new film she was in, Ridicule, was opening the festival. He had just acquired the movie and said he wanted to discuss it. They had breakfast at the Hotel du Cap Rock, joined by a female Miramax executive. After the executive left, Weinstein invited Godrush up to his suite to see The View, and to discuss the film's marketing and even an Oscar campaign, she said in an interview. I was so naive and unprepared, she said. Upstairs, he asked to give her a massage, she said. She said no. He argued that casual massages were an American custom he gave them to his secretary all the time, she recalled him saying. The next thing I know, he's pressing against me and pulling off my sweater, she said. She pulled away and left the suite. Alain Godrèche, her father, said in an interview that his daughter told him about the episode the next morning.
Seeking advice, she later called the female Miramax executive, who told her not to say anything, lest she hurt the film's release. They put my face on the poster, she said. This is Miramax, she said. You can't say anything. Since then, Godrush has starred in films in France and the United States. Like Paltrow, she felt she had to maintain a rapport with Weinstein, and sent him friendly emails inquiring about party invitations and potential work. I tried to negotiate the situation over the years, and negotiate with myself and pretend it kind of never happened, she said. I wish I'd had someone to talk to, to say, how do you deal with this? In 2003, Don Dunning was doing small acting gigs, attending design school and waitressing in a nightclub where she met Weinstein. The 24-year-old was wary, but Weinstein was friendly, professional and supportive, she said, offering her a screen test at Miramax, inviting her to lunch and dinner to talk about films and even giving her and her boyfriend tickets to see the producers on Broadway. Actress Don Dunning was doing small acting gigs, attending design school and waitressing in a nightclub where she met Weinstein in 2003. Then his assistant invited her to a meal with Weinstein at a Manhattan hotel. Dunning headed to the restaurant, where she was told Weinstein's earlier meeting was running late, so she should head up to his suite. There was no meeting. Weinstein was in a bathrobe, behind a coffee table covered with papers. He told her they were contracts for his next three films, according to Dunning but she could only sign them on a condition she would have to have three-way sex with him. She said she laughed, assuming he was joking, and he grew angry. Yeah, I'll never make it in this business, she said he told her. This is how the business works. She fled, she said, and when the assistant called her the next day, she hung up. She told her father, Rick Dunning, of the episode within a few months, he said in an interview. I was like maybe this is how the business works, she said. She left acting soon after and became a costume designer.